Hi everybody, Lee Veris here, bringing you Photoshop tips and techniques for teachers and students. In today's rant, I thought we'd do something uh, fun for all of those of us that are uh, on lockdown still, so we can't really go out and photograph things, but you can always wander around your, uh, your local environment, your backyard, your deck, and uh, I'd like to show you uh, how to do, how to create photo mandalas. And uh, I'm doing the, this rant on Monday in honor of Mandala Monday. So let's get into it. So this tutorial examines the construction of three different photo mandalas and reveals the different decisions about the techniques that you need to use. First, do we scale or crop to arrive at a square image? Then we're going to duplicate layers and transform them either by flipping or rotating. And finally, the real magic happens uh, with the blend mode that we choose. And we have to decide which blend mode will yield the best effect. And here we're going to look to see examples of light and darken and overlay and various combinations of those different uh, blend modes. So I took a little walk uh, around my house and uh, hunting for images that would lend themselves to the photo mandala approach. And uh, I've got three examples here. Um, I mean, we'll start with a little garden sculpture I've got here. This, this thing has a little solar bat light in it and lights up at night. Uh, my wife has got a thing for pink flamingos. So we have pink flamingos all over the place. And this is one of the classier ones. <laughs> Uh, anyway, uh, let's uh, let's take a look at this. Uh, so we're going to edit in. Just open a smart object in Photoshop, and here we are. Um, I don't really need this, the smart object, so I'm just going to go ahead and flatten that. And uh, this is one where what I'm just going to I'm just going to crop it to a square right at the get go here. I'm going to crop this. To a square just like this all right so now I'm gonna just command J this to duplicate this and now we we have to transform it so we're going to go under the edit menu to transform and uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna flip this horizontal okay so now I've got two layers and they're sort of facing the opposite direction here. And this is where we start to create the magic for the photo mandala. So I'm going to change the blend mode uh, to lighten. So the, the lighten blend mode says take everything in this layer uh, that can make the underlying layer lighter and just use that. So substitute the pixels. So what we, what we create is we just blend in the th parts that can make it lighter. We're already starting to abstract this uh, image quite a bit here. Um, but we're not done. So we're going we're gonna to create another layer that's the merge of these two layers. So I'm going to hold down the Option or Alt key and select Merge Visible here. All right, now this layer I'm going to transform yet again. So under the edit menu again, transform. And this time we're going to flip it vertical. And uh, we'll do the same thing. We'll go to lighten only. And now I'm really starting to create, getting closer and closer to that photo mandala effect. We have one more, one more thing we can do here. Um, I'm going to hold down the Option or Alt again, I select Merge Visible, and this places another copy that's the merged result of the underlying layers at the top. I'm going to transform again, and this time I'm going to rotate 90 degrees clockwise. Okay, and as you might be able to guess, I'm going to blend that in using Lighten Mode, and uh, there's my photomondal effect. So quite a bit different than my original, right? Uh, and I mean, to finish it off, I think I need to uh, put a curve on it and uh, let's, just, uh, let's just add some contrast and darken it up a bit. Something like that I think looks nice. Okay. 
All right, next, let's go back to Lightroom. Uh, so let's let's take a look at the the garden hose here. Just uh, it kind of I look for things that have lines that go outside of the frame, and uh, we'll take a look at this photo edit in. And um, again, I'm not. I'm just going to flatten. And what I want instead of cropping this, I'm going to explore a different way of doing this. So um, let's uh, zoom out just a little bit here. What I'm going to do is uh, duplicate this first. So I'm going to do the the Command J or Control J, duplicate that, and then uh, I'm going to canvas out the Im image. So we'll go Image Canvas Size. So I'm going to um, let's see. So I, I'm going to flip it across this, uh, this edge, right? So what I'm going to do is a canvas out towards the bottom. It'll, this will become obvious in a minute. I have two choices here, right? I'm going to, and what I'm going to do is duplicate uh, the height. We're going to make the height 200%, and we've placed the center of the uh, transform for the canvas size up at the top so it's going to canvas towards the bottom here so I'm making it twice as tall right and um, let's zoom out just a little bit so you can see what's going on so now I take the uh, the move tool and I'm um, first I'm going to transform it so and and this is a lot of people get into trouble that come up here and they do you know uh, you know, image size or image rotation or something like that. You got to transform the layer. So we're going to transform the layer. We're going to flip it vertical. Now I'm going to take the move tool and just drag it down. So this is uh, this is the way you can kind of create these these mirror images. So it, it lines up and it's sort of a flipped version of itself across this this axis here. Okay, great. So uh, I'm going to flatten it. And now I want to squash this into a square. So I'm going to do that using image size. But very important, I'm going to uncheck this. Normally you see that that is checked, and that's constraining the aspect ratio. So I'm going to uncheck that. And I can either scale it up, uh, making the width match the height, or I can scale it down. In this case, that's what I'm going to do. I'm just, I think, you know, 6,000 pixels on a side is, is plenty. So we'll just make this match. So 6240. And um, because it's unconstrained, so the width doesn't change, and by changing the height, now I have the square. Okay, now it's pretty much like uh, the same thing. So I'm going to Command J, duplicate that into a new layer. Uh, let's transform again. We're going to transform and flip horizontal. So then that way it's uh, it, um, it's kind of facing the opposite direction, just like we had the uh, flamingo before. So now let's see. Let's let's look at, okay, so there's lighten. That's what lighten looks like. I'm just changing the blend mode here. Um, sometimes you look and see what darken looks like. So uh, instead of doing lighten, I think I'm going to do darken. All right, so uh, what we're going to do now is uh, merge visible again, holding down the Option or Alt key, um, merge visible. And now this merge, I'm going to rotate. So we'll rotate, oops, we're going to rotate that 90 degrees. doesn't matter whether you do it clockwise or counterclockwise. So now everything is, uh, it's rotated and Usually, I find that if I darken the initial um, uh, blend mode, I'll I'll use lighten for the the other blend mode. Okay, so this now is uh, that's that's our that's a that's a pretty valid uh, you know, mandala effect rather than everything symmetrical. Let's um, let's save that. I'm gonna 
duplicate or merge visible again. So I'll hold down the option or alt and merge visible. Okay. Now let's let's explore what that looks like. Um, uh, let's see. This one was in lighten. If I darken it, I'm, it's it gets it's a, got a completely different look, and it's it, sometimes it's worth exploring this kind of look, right? So let's let's uh, let's do that. I'm gonna I'm gonna merge visible here, and I think just uh, the it's it's so dark. I think what I'm gonna do is run a curve uh, just for illustration purposes. I'm gonna run a curve directly on that. So. Commander Control M pulls up the curve dialog, and this is just going to be applied directly um, to the the pixels of that layer. So I'm going to brighten it up quite a bit here, just bringing my white point right to the edge of the slope, the mountain slope there of that that histogram, and we're we're going to open up the shadows quite a bit. Okay, so this is a this is one kind of interpretation. And you saw we had another one that looked like this. Okay, so here's here's another one. Now one more we can do, and that is uh, instead of instead of doing that initial uh, blend as uh, darken, let's do it as lighten. You know, so this is a completely different kind of a thing. Um, I'm going to use the hold down the option key. Uh, and uh, merge visible again on this merged one we will uh, go to transform and rotate it again and now let's see uh, we used lighten before let's use darken okay so this is this is now a different um, a different looking uh, mandala than this is and then this was different than either one of them, right? So you can see how one image can create uh, multiple different mandalas. And uh, it's very, very kind of cool here. And sometimes you can kind of blend, um, you can blend two layers together, even if it's, even if it's just a matter of like, okay, let's make this 50%. So now I've got a 50-50 blend of those two as just a little more complexity, a little more interest. You can also do things like uh, change the blend mode to, you know, screen or overlay or soft light. Uh, you know, sometimes, sometimes these things work. You know, if it's really dark. And again, sometimes you can play around with this. So you can actually spend hours just trying to fine tuning these things and trying to find uh, just the right kind of uh, um, photo mandala. All right, let's look at the the last example. Here's here's a here's a good one. Again, all simple uh, images taken around my my house in my backyard. Um, so edit in. And uh, the reason I, I actually open these things up as smart objects is so that I can decide where I want to save them. So Lightroom's waiting to see what I do um, because I've opened it as a smart object. And uh, I don't really need the smart object so much. I just want to delay the saving of, of this file. So uh, here's one I think we'll just go ahead and do a crop on. Um, and... Uh, um, Let's see, so just move this like kind of like that. All right, so we're gonna crop it. Um, go through our process again, duplicating the, the layer. I'm gonna command, command J it. And uh, we'll do the flip here transform flip horizontal now here um, can it look at lighten or darken uh, but these these sort of monochromatic ones it's all kind of very subtle shades of blue 
sometimes I find uh, that you get really interesting effects if you use difference. So difference inverts the underlying image with the values of the current layer. So that, that creates this kind of really interesting, uh, it sort of magnifies all the, the color variation and uh, uh, inverts some areas and doesn't invert others. And it's, 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 it, it's always kind of surprising what it does. But uh, now we need, to, um, we need to create a merged version. So we'll hold down the option or alt, select merge visible. And this one, uh, I think I'm going to, I want, it seems sort of off center. So I'm going to flip it again. Um, so we're going to uh, transform this by flipping horizontal. Okay, and now let's see, um, perhaps I can, you know, so looking at lighten only, darken is too dark. Lighten is, that's, that's, that has potential. So let's, let's go with that. Again, we'll merge visible, hold on option or alt, select merge visible. And I'm gonna flip this again, this time vertically because now we've started to establish some symmetry. And uh, let's see if I, okay, so there's lighten, there's darken. What is difference? Difference is kind of cool. All right, so difference, lighten. I'm gonna go lighten one more time and we're going to duplicate this one more time, or merge it, I should say. So let's merge visible. This merged one, we're going to transform and rotate 90 degrees clockwise. Get rid of that crop tool there. And let's try difference again. Let's see what happens. Okay, so you can see we've got a, a very complex kind of mandala uh, image going on here. And... Um, Let's see. Sometimes I like to look at the channels and see if there's something interesting in a, in a different look in the channels. You know, so that there's that blue channel. That's kind of interesting. The green channel. You know, I think I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna do a little trick here. I'm gonna put the blue channel into this layer. And uh, so I'm going to go image, apply image. We're going to get the blue channel into that empty layer. And people have been looking at my 10 channel workflow, kind of know that move. Uh, and now let's see, maybe I can screen this or color dodge it. Ooh, color dodge looks kind of cool. And uh, maybe reduce the opacity. So it doesn't need to be quite so bright. That's, that's really kind of popping those blue things, which is kind of cool. And then, you know, maybe I'll just do a curve after all here, open up the shadows just a little bit. Okay, so you can kind of see this iterative process. And I've got several layers, but, you know, it's, it's always such a complete surprise that I ended up with something like this when I started with this. So um, the other cool thing with these is uh, when you when you look at these, there's a lot of detail at very high res. You know, here we're at, we're at 100%, and there's all kinds of really kind of cool things going on in here. You can make a really giant print of this, and it's like an abstract expressionist painting. Um, very cool. Let's take a look at the others again. There's our garden hose. We've got a couple of variations of that. And, uh, and the flamingo. So you can have a lot of fun with this. So to review, we saw how to crop or scale. Uh, one way is the uh, mirror flipping and extending the canvas to accommodate the mirror half and then flattening and scaling to the square format. Or simply cropping to a square at the get-go. Then we built up dupl by duplicating layers and transforming either by flipping horizontally or vertically or rotating 90 degrees. Finally, most of the magic happens in the blend modes where we, about 80% of the time, I would say, I use 
lighten or darken, but occasionally difference, overlay, or soft light. I hope you enjoyed this episode of Photoshop Rant. If you have any questions or you'd like to see more details about any of the techniques I touched on in this project, please let me know in the comments. You can always find more detailed information on my website, and you might consider following me on YouTube and Twitter to find out about my various classes and workshops. Be sure and like the video, and please subscribe to my channel on YouTube and ring the bell so that you don't miss any rants in the future. Please consider following me on Instagram. I have two books in print, available on Amazon and Kindle, as well as paper versions, Mastering Exposure and my bestseller, Skin, The Complete Guide to Digitally Lighting, Photographing, and Retouching Faces and Bodies. If you're looking for more in-depth Photoshop tutorials, I have a number of video courses available from my online school at veris.com. Look under the Education menu for Online Courses and pick from 17 courses covering all aspects of post-production, workflow, retouching, and special effects, including my latest course on 21st century lighting techniques, Lighting in Layers in Photoshop. Thank you for watching. Post your questions and suggestions for topics to explore under the video, and I'll see you in the next Photoshop rant.